Hi everyone, it's Andy from Rage Print, and we're just going to do a slightly different video in that I'm going to be talking about the Baby R2 boards that I introduced in the last episode. So these are the little boards that I designed to go inside the Baby R2s that I made for my kids. Uh, somebody asked a question on how these work, and they're quite simple really. It's just a very basic board that I designed on KiCad and then sent to JLCP, JLCPCB and just they took 10 boards. So we have the header pins for the DF player with the header pins for the ESP32 with the USB part here. So the big silver bit sits up here with the, with the CPU on. We've got a 1K resistor. And then we've got four sets of header pins for the right drive, left drive, dome, and then optional extra of near pixels, which you could add into the code if you wanted to. So you want to do a near pixel strip, you could. In all four in all four cases, the headers are ground, voltage, and signal. So it's just a servo wire. Uh, voltage is always in the middle, and if it doesn't work, you probably just need to swap, turn the turn the cable around. So you ground and signal the right way around. I've got two terminal blocks here. Now this terminal block is for the speaker. It doesn't matter which wire you plug the speaker into. And I'm using one of these little little speakers. As I said, it doesn't matter which, which wire goes into which hole. The top terminal block is for your power. Now ignore the color of the wires here. This is positive. This is negative. The only reason the wires are the other way around is because my battery connector, so this battery, the connector with the clip here clips into that bit and they don't match. So we've got positive going into the red wire, sorry, so negative going into the red wire, positive going into the black wire. It doesn't match up. So, as long as you remember, positive and negative. I did mark the boards accordingly. Uh, this is a board that hadn't been marked. So that's pretty much it. Now, the only other thing we need to do is get the MAC address for the ESP. So we have an ESP and I'm just going to plug it in uh, into the Arduino IDE. So you can see it's plugged in, we've got the little red light. And we're going to get to here. We're going to fly. So we need to make sure the ESP32 dev module is selected. And that we're selecting the right COM port. Usually when you plug these things in, it detects the COM port. Uh, if not, you can use Windows Device Manager to find out which COM port it is that you plugged it into. So we're on COM3. And we're ready to go. So the sketch, this is the PS3 controller Mac finder sketch. It's a bit flaky, but it does work eventually. So we're going to connect on the serial connection of 115200. And that's what this is going to be using the serial monitor. PS3 library is going to begin. We're going to connect the navigation controller. This thing. And then it's going to get the Mac address and then print that MAC address into the serial monitor. Now, as I said, it's a bit flaky, but it does do it. So first of all, let's upload the sketch. Done uploading, cool. I'm gonna unplug it and plug it back in again, just to make sure it's out of any upload connection. So that's connected. And I'm now gonna push the PS button on here. Which makes the light go red. Now, what should happen is we should see the MAC address here. Now, what I'm finding is I have to disconnect the ESP and plug it back in again. There we go. I don't know why, but basically disconnect it, reconnect it, and you wait for the light to go out on the PS3 control and plug it back in again. It then picks up the last MAC address. It's almost like it's broadcasting the MAC address as it disconnects. So we've got the MAC address. We're going to copy that. So you control C. And then we're going to find the BBR2 sketch. Now, this was originally designed by uh, Matt Schwartz, 
and then modified by Dan Boris, who did some changes to it with something else. I then modified it again to use with the PS3 navigation controller, essentially taking a lot of the shadow uh, ideas. So we have here for the connections, so servo one is left drive and that's on pin 12. You don't need to worry about that because it's already done by the header pins. Uh, servo two is the right drive, that's pin 13. Dome, servo three, pin 14. And DF player is running on pin 26 and 27 for RX and TX respectively. So you don't need to worry about that. You don't need to change any of that if you're using this board. And then we go all the way down here and then we see where it says in setup. Serial begin, PS3 attach, notify, attach on connect, on connect. So and then we've got the MAC address here. Now I've already pasted it in. So you paste the MAC address in with quotes. And then that is all you need to do. Um, yeah, that's all you need to do. All this is just to make it work. So you can ignore a lot, ignore a lot of this. You I mean, feel free to go through it and have a look yourself and work out what's going on. Uh, especially if you want to connect a uh, normal PS3 shock, a normal shock controller with dual joystick, you might want to change the dome movement from the um, the two shoulder buttons to the other joystick. In which case, you'd need to actually write that code in, and essentially, you'd be taking where is it? You'd be mapping the joystick control. And then mapping it to a value and then um, you don't need to mix it with the dome drive but then outputting that value to the servo to servo 3 and just be left and right uh, so that will be on the x-axis with it so anyway we've got all we need we've got our mac address that's plugged in so now we're going to re-upload to the same board We go upload complete so now if we turn the serial monitor back on don't know why it's turned off and then unplug it and plug it back in again right so it's moaning that the df player is not connected which we know because the df player is currently here and nor is this board connected to this board so we know that we know that the sketch is on there that we need. That's the standard DF player um, check serial monitor output that it does. So we'll unplug the board again. And we're going to place our ESP onto the board. Yeah, as I said, USB facing down. Now we come to the, to the DF player. So here's a DF player. Uh, this is probably one of the clones. It's hard to tell now, there's so many of them. And that just gets plugged in on there with the SD card facing that way. You need a mini SD card, and we're going to load some sounds onto it. I have my R2 sounds. Um, the code that I've done in here, is anything else? There is. The code I've done only has 36 and they're split into banks uh, for four. So you have uh, happy, sad, uh, scared and angry. Uh, essentially, I'm replicating the noises that the human side regulations does. Now, as you can see, they're all numbered 1 to 36 and they're all prepended with a zero. So prefix with a zero. And what we need to do is I'm going to plug in the SD card. So the SD card's ready. And yeah, there's two ways of doing this. You can copy them over one by one and then you know you've got them in the right order. Or you can select them all and copy them over in one go. But you start off with number one. And then shift click like that and then copy them all over. Uh, and it should write them all in in the order that you, you know, from one to 36 because you select them in that order. So copy them to there. And then that's ready. And then pop the SD card in there. Right, so now we should be ready to go. So if I plug the battery in, hopefully this should work. Right, let me turn the PS3 controller on. You know why it won't work? 
because the speaker's been disconnected. Two secs. Let's try it again with the speaker connected this time. There we go, that's connected. So we know that works, the DF player made noise. So that's the startup sound. So if you press the top, So bear in mind that it's a little speaker, the sound's not going to be brilliant, but there we go. So that's the sound working. So now what we're going to do is zoom out a bit. Right. One droid. Let's plug in the dome motor because if the dome motor works, they're all going to work. It's a dome survey wire and there you go okay happy with that and then well, let's plug all the rest and see what it does Problem is the wires aren't that long, so it ends up becoming a bit of a uh, spread that loud, didn't I? Uh, so... I can tell by that one the wrong way around already. Go, said servo move. There we go, so I hope that no, it's done the same there. There we go. Cool, that was harder than it needs to be. Right. The jittering you're seeing there is actually the dead zone band on the joystick. It's quite sensitive. That's something I keep meaning to look at in the code, but I never actually managed to get working. Uh, the kids don't care. <laughs> so yeah, that's pretty much it. There's not much else I can do to that, really. Um, fairly simple circuit. As long as you get the board the right way around on both of them and you get the, um, the servo pins the right way around. I mean, as you saw, I've got them the wrong way around myself. And you get your power the right way around. It should work fine. Um, that's pretty much it. So I hope that helped. And thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.